All right, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Joining me this week to discuss some of the cool things happening in the world of photography are Mr. Martin Bailey and Mr. Jeffrey Totaro. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hey, Frederick. Hey, Frederick. Jeffrey. Hey. Hey, hey. All right, Martin, uh, Martin, both of you guys, let's jump through what you've been up to quickly. Let's talk about that, but then we're going to dive into the show because there's a million things to talk about. This is one of our <laughs> holiday episodes, and people have shopping to do, so we gotta we got to talk about this stuff. <laughs> so, so Martin, yes. uh, Martin, speaking of, of uh, the holidays and winter wonderland type, you know, vistas, <laughs> you're getting ready to head out. What's, what's going on in your world? Oh, you, you, you've got my marketing down there, Frederick, with the Winter Wonderland. Um, what I do? So yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I start my my Winter Wonderland tours. I've actually got. I start off with a private tour to the Snow Monkeys, um, you know, just sort of northwest of Japan uh, next week, taking four people from Singapore over to there, um, and then from January I start. I've got three three tours in Hokkaido back to back. Um, so really looking forward to that. They're actually getting record um, snow levels at the moment, um, to the point where the army is being called out to actually dig towns out. Um, oh. So we've got a we've got a a little bit too much snow at the moment. Um, wow. And of course Tokyo's Tokyo's sunny, colder now, but sunny and everything. So, but yeah, we're getting gear gearing up for my uh, my winter tours, and then. I, I might be taking a small group. I've not actually announced any details yet. I might be taking a small group to Lapland in, at the end of March um, for a what reconnaissance is trip. What well, is Finland. It? It's the top of Finland, um, and we'll be we'll probably be doing a 500-kilometer snowmobile ride over three days and um, lots of great stuff. 500 kilometers. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Wow. To get to a to get to a place to get to a place way up north where we'll see the aurora and. Um, yeah, we'll drive through some some again more winter wonderland sort of places. So that the winter amazing. wonderland starts starts next week and finishes probably at the beginning of April this year for me, which is great. Wow. Um, and then I go the opposite way around. I've got my Namibia trip in August, um, which is going to be you know obviously that's desert, so it's going to be yeah. totally different. But uh, and we've actually wow. still got a few places free on the Namibia. I think the obviously Namibia is nowhere near the Ebola um, issues. But I think that that's kind of hitting that. So we we we've got a few places left on the Namibia trip still. But yeah, I mean that that's going to be great too. I can't wait to get back. It's a beautiful country. That's amazing. Only Martin Bailey, man. You're like I said, James Bond with a camera, right? Yeah, look, look, look <laughs> in the dream. That's good. Yeah. Oh, what yeah, James Bond sure. film was that? That it started out with him him being chased on snow on the snowmobiles. That's yeah. That's Martin. I don't remember. Her Majesty's Secret I, I, Service. I yeah. Thank you, Her Majesty's ah. Secret Service. Yes. Yeah. Martin, and you have the accent and everything. You're perfect. Right. Cool. <laughs> I need to smarten this up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Welcome back to the show, Martin. Always a pleasure. You too. Right. And also, Mr. Jeffrey Totaro is here. Man, we met in New York for the first time. Yeah. We met in person mm -hmm. at Photo Plus, man. It was good to meet you. Oh, it was great to meet you too, Frederick. And it was a very impressive your setup there with Panasonic. And I was watched you from afar doing a couple of those interviews. And I think I watched most of the interviews later when they were published online. And oh, I have cool. to say, you have a real knack for that. I mean, you're really, really definitely good at, at doing that. And a knack for the pants, yeah. but yeah, it was definitely good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it's been uh, for me. It's been a, a a pretty good year overall, and the, the fall is always a, a busy time. I don't know exactly. Obviously, there's fall color and things like that, but it's just I don't know. People get the get nervous about spending their uh, their budget dollars, and also you know running out of good weather. So the fall is always always busy. And this year didn't fail to disappoint. Been traveling around a lot, doing jobs uh, all over the country in D.C. and um, it's out in Santa Monica just a couple weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving. So that's always always nice to visit California. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, other where else have I been? San Antonio, is in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, a bunch of places doing doing a variety of things. I I feel like after Labor Day, I kind of I feel like I just went like underground, and now I'm just starting yeah. to come back up again. I just feel like I was just like full throttle. Had uh, very little time off, and uh, now just working on getting all those files delivered and. Trying to keep the clients happy without uh, being too late and delivering everything. So, I hear you. and then and then I have um, I do this annual workshop every year coming up in February. Um, it's down in Palm Beach, Florida, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's with the Palm Beach Photographic uh, Workshops. They they run a great uh, set of workshops out of there throughout the year, but most of them are in the winter because that's when everybody wants to go to Florida. 
Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a great. It's a five day workshop. Um, it's a it's a lot of fun. We always get a good group of people, and uh, so we you know shoot architecture and, and interiors and uh, do some classroom time and post production and and uh, so um, I think there's still a few spaces available if anybody's interested. So been talking to a lot of people, get a lot of emails and phone calls from people trying to figure out what it's all about. So and what's what's the date for that again? The the window. Uh, it is, when did I have it down here? It's in February, like the 17th through the 21st. Through the 21st, okay. Yeah, cool. so it's five days, five solid days. It's, uh, I think it's a Tuesday through Saturday. We're trying to get Perfect. people, like, one, you know, take advantage of that weekend for the last day and then travel home on Sunday. Okay. Well, well, we'll link to that in the in the, ep- the notes for this, obviously. Appreciate it. Um, cool. Well, welcome back to the show, Jeffrey. Good to see Thanks, you. Thanks, Roger. Good to see you. Um, and just a quick note for me, I spent, and so we're, full disclosure, we're recording this show Tuesday evening instead of our normal day, Monday evening, because I was um, invited by a TWIP listener, Mr. Lucas Passmore, down to hang out at Swing Studios Los Angeles, Swing Studios LA, which is, if you guys go to Los Angeles, you got to go to this place. This is a... <laughs> ridiculously cool studio. It is on, literally on Venice Beach, right? So oh, really? It's I was just three there. Levels. It's at least, yeah, it's at least three levels. Um, the bottom level is this giant, beautiful studio space with one wall open to the beach, obviously, hmm. um, that you can pull sheer curtains to have a giant soft box, and plus, they, you know, they're equipped with all kind of lighting and all that stuff. Um, there's a full kitchen in there for catering. There's like all the whole place is designed for photography because there's all these little cool nooks and crannies where you can go set up and shoot and then there's a a deck upstairs with a barbecue mm-hmm. grill you can overlook and you know look down on the lesser people that are skating by on Venice <laughs> Beach <laughs> awesome. it is amazing so we were there yesterday shooting models all day long so mm. oh you yeah. poor thing it was so <laughs> horrible it was so horrible no but uh Lucas Lucas arranged it Jeff um, is the uh, the owner of the place, and he was accommodating. And you know, turns out he's a mixologist as well as <laughs> all this other stuff. So he was making all these cool gourmet drinks while we were shooting. And life so, so so drinking and shooting models. That sounds like a terrible day. <laughs> yeah, well, it was in sequence. Yeah, we did yeah. models first. <laughs> They most of them left, and then, <laughs> then, <laughs> then the drinking began. But it was good. It was a good time. So. Bottom line, check, if you are in L.A. or planning to go to L.A., go go swing by Swing Studios. If not, just to have a look at the place. It's just It just blew my mind. And he said that uh, Jeffrey, the owner, Jeff, said that uh, if you mention the word TWIP or Frederick or something of that ilk when you go and you want to book the studio, he'll knock some percentage off of the price, like 15% or something. So my name is money. I'm just saying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally money. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys, let's just jump into the show. Before we do that, I want to thank our first sponsor for this episode of This Week in Photo. And that's our good friends over at FreshBooks.com. All right, let's dive into the show. This is, uh, we're like I said, this, this as we record, this is December 9th, so the people that are smart have already started and or finished their Christmas shopping People like me haven't started yet, so we are, we're doing this show for the holiday shoppers out there that are shopping for the photographer in their life, so if you're looking for gift ideas to put on that wish list, or, you know, you just, you know, maybe it's you, maybe you just want to buy yourself something for Christmas, like I do from time to time, we're going to give you guys a list of things to choose from. Martin Bailey, I'm looking at the show notes here, you've got a list of cool things that you want to tempt photographers with. With. Let's run down your <laughs> list. What do you got? Um, okay, so the first one, you know, while everyone else is going mirrorless, I'm still buying big chunky cameras with battery grips. <laughs> um, got the 7D Mark II here. Um, this is the first thing, and, the, and I think this is this is retailing for like two thousand two hundred dollars in the US, I believe. Um, with the yen is actually really weak at the moment, so the prices are looking better than they were for the last few years. But um, this is a pretty mean camera, you know, for a a sports. If, if the person you're buying for is a sports or wildlife photographer, then this is just amazing. I, I mean, it, it's very close in many ways to the 1DX, which is like three, four times more expensive. Um, 
the only thing with this is, and, well, I say the only thing, for a sports and wildlife photographer, it's actually a good thing, but it's a crop factor camera. So mm -hmm. you get 1.6 times of your focal length. Uh, I actually said when I, when I went full frame years ago that I would never buy another crop factor camera. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons was because the viewfinder is pretty dim. Uh, but this actually isn't. It, they've done a really good job with the viewfinder and everything. And um, it's got 10 frames per second and mo the most focus points out of any Canon camera at the moment. It's got more than the 1DX and the 5D3. So, um, and it's pretty cool. Um, so that's my first pick. And okay. the second one. Wait a minute, is, wait a minute. Price point yeah. on that. What are, what are we looking at price wise on that thing? So th this is this, I believe, I checked a few weeks ago on BH and I think it was $2,200, something okay, like 22. that. So it's yeah. not the cheapest yeah. thing. Okay. Now, the second thing is actually a little bit more expensive. <laughs> um, We're going but, up the chain. But, yeah. So, so th here's the thing for $5,000, <laughs> you could buy you could buy this and the new 100 to 400 millimeter Mark II lens and that's a that is a an incredibly versatile lens that that was like 14 years old the old version and everyone was waiting for the new version for many years because it's been it basically the the resolution of the cameras went up and it and it showed all of the flaws in the lens so the old one just basically became unusable yeah. uh, i know that some people did still use it but if you really go in and and look at the the sharpness it wasn't there after 10 megapixels or so but the the new one um, is is scheduled to be released towards the middle and end of this month any probably next week the week after um, strategically timed for Christmas as you might know of course. Uh, if, if you don't have your order in you might not get it for Christmas anyway but I ordered mine on the first day I'm second on the list in my Tokyo uh, camera store so I think I'll probably get mine in time for my winter tours so I will be doing a, a huge review on on both the 7D and the 100 to 400 once they're out um, so that's the first so for, for, for a mere five thousand dollars you can actually <laughs> and, and you know what it actually it actually does make a lot of sense money wise because what this will replace in some ways it won't replace it because I'm not selling them on but yeah. I'm actually going to be in a very similar position to my 1DX and the 200 to 400 um, with the 1.5 uh, 1.5 times extendability built yeah. in, and what that means is is that is twenty thousand dollars worth of gear right there. So mm -hmm. you're, I'm actually going to be hand holdable. Um, you can hand hold the 200 to 400, but it's more difficult. It's a lot more difficult. Uh, I'm going to be hand holdable more and possibly more versatile with, and I have more reach with a quarter of the price of gear so it actually is a good way to set up your um, Martin, your sports. Martin, this sounds <laughs> this sounds suspiciously similar to how I would imagine you convincing your wife that you need to buy <laughs> this stuff <laughs> so so here's, here's the thing now that this is my business and and I and I'm responsible for the budget it doesn't yeah. that doesn't matter for me but I know <laughs> how, I know exactly how difficult that conversation is so mm -hmm. I hope I'm enabling a few people here um, and, and as usual, just tell them that Martin told you to get it. That's um, right. <laughs> there you go. I've, I've actually well, had spouses email me before, so it's I'm getting used to this. Look at that. See, <laughs> email Martin and have him justify your purchase decision with your significant other, and there you go. Especially Martin, you should charge for like you know custom recorded voicemail messages in with that cool accent. It would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, well, you've you got to remember the accent only can only sounds cool if you're on the other side of the pond, respectively. I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, because yeah, no, I hear you. But still, yeah, anything's better. So. Okay. <laughs> All well, right. This, so what else? What else you thing, got? I've, the next thing I've got, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to rely on um, the the visual here, but for those that are watching. Uh, Elastolite. This is actually not Elastolite, but the one, the best one that you can get from B&H is a Elastolite tri-flip reflector slash diffuser. And what this is basically is, it's a diffuser, so it's like a translucent, a translucent um, diffuser, but that can also be used as a reflector. And it, they come with these covers, so you can actually put a cover on it and make it into a a gold or a black. Or a uh, a total reflector, or a silver one, and th this is a five-way one. The yeah. seven-way one, 
the cool thing with these is that it's got a handle on it. So I can actually go out and for me I use these for various things, but one of the things that I like to do is if I'm doing like flower photos in the park, I can actually use the diffuser and just hold it out over the flower and put it in soft light really quickly. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my my second one is the I'm I'm gonna I'm saying the last light triflip because that's what I would buy if I was going to buy from the US. This mm -hmm. is actually a Selens a Selens one that I got from Hong Kong. So um, oh. and this is uh, it, it's great, you know. So I'm 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 happy with the uh, with this either way. Yeah, um, I have that that last light. I, I use it all the time. It's really good. I like the yeah, oh. the versatility. Turn the reflect. Turn the material inside out. And you can do silver, or gold, or black, yeah. or white. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. It's been on my list for a while. And for some reason, I've because I have the I have one of those flip out. You know, the round ones, the the yeah. five way round ones. So they they can be a diffuser or you know gold or silver or white or black or whatever. Um, and I've had one for geez, like. 10 years, the same one mm. for 10 years. So it's hard for me to like, okay, and I know those are better because they have the handle on them and you know, you could you could go one handed. So I just have to pull the trigger and get one of those. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what do, what do those some... cost? What do those cost, Martin? Um, I'll have to click this. I think they're only they're only like $40, $50. Uh, it depends oh. what you buy. Um, yeah. how many So, I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. This, oh no, this one, the seven-way one is $119. And okay. um, the if you go for a five-way, like the one I just showed you, they're about I think they're about forty, fifty dollars. Depends yeah. which ones you go for. Um, but you it, it, that forever. also depends on the side. Yeah. Sorry. You, you keep them forever. Yeah, they those they last forever, right? right? For or at least you know a long, what? long time. So they normally do. The, I actually. I did a podcast a few weeks ago in which I mentioned this, and I've actually lost my old one. I don't know where I've put it, <laughs> but I, I used to have a really good size diffuser that I used for similar work, and I, I've lost it somewhere. So that's oh. my own stupid fault. Normally, yeah. they don't wear out. It's not like a Mark II comes out and you need to replace it. Well, I mean, um, that one that you lost is still being used, just not by you, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, my fourth item... I've mentioned this before, but I still absolutely love this Burgeon. Um, it's it's actually a watchmaker's blower. It's got a very fine, uh, it's a the nozzle on the end is really fine. Um, Doug K was in Iceland with me, and and he bought one of these as soon as he got back. The only place that I can find them on sale in the U.S. is actually a watch repairing store. But I've put the I've put the link in the show notes. Um, these are the best blower that I've ever seen. It's actually the, the, just the shape in your hand and everything as well. Uh, yeah. It's a really good size. And the, the very fine nozzle means that it get, you get a really good, powerful uh, squirt of air out of there. Well, so this well is the, Martin, this is... Martin, shouldn't photographers just go to their local uh, office supply store and buy some canned air to spray on their <laughs> sensor? <laughs> Well, of course you should, um, and and then you'll spend the next half an hour trying to clean the gunk off of it as well. So right, which um, you would never do that, and then you'll spend the next day or so packing it up to ship it off to the manufacturer yeah. <laughs> if you don't yeah. shadow the uh, the yeah. sensor in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is there is you can buy certain canned air that is okay for cameras, but I would never put it on my sensor. Um, so, but I, I've actually I was on a tour once, and a, and a guy, a good friend of mine. I, I could hear someone spraying for hours, not hours, but you know, spray after spray after spray. And I thought, what's that? And I, I stood up and walked to the back of the bus, and a friend of mine that was on the tour was sitting there with a can right into his into his sensor unit in the sensor box. I was like, oh my god, stop! Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not a good idea. So this is this is the Bergeon B R G E O N number five seven three three blower. Uh, they do two different types. This is the one I like. Great stuff. Five seven three three. And then, yep. The last one is a Craft and Vision gift card. Go to craftandvision.com. They do twenty, forty, sixty dollar cards, and that way your loving spouse can go away, or whoever you're buying for can just go and pick the books that they want, um, and you, you know, you make everybody happy. So that's I love my five that. items. I love that. And you've got how many books do you have up on Craft and Vision right now? At least two, right? I've got three. There's three. yeah, we've got. Uh, making the print, sharpshooter, and what's the other one? <laughs> Forget <laughs> striking landscapes. Got striking it. landscapes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, you're you're the main reason why I brought my uh, my Epson printer 
out of retirement because of that <laughs> PDF. <laughs> so yeah, that's so it's all your fault opinion. for me rearranging my office the way it is because I had to accommodate that that giant thing in here. So, <laughs> that's good though. Cool. Okay. All right, I'm good picks, Martin. Good. That's very good. Awesome. Hey, thanks. All right, Jeffrey, you're up. Yeah. You're on base. What's uh, you're at bat? What's your uh, your? All I right, well, I got picks some... of the week. These aren't picks of the week. These are Christmas <laughs> picks of the year, I guess. Picks of the year, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've got some. Uh, I threaded together four out of the five categories. I've got education, inspiration, information, creation, and then the fifth one doesn't really fit into that theme. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll start with the education. I was thinking you know, it'd be great um, uh, to give somebody uh, either you know a gift card like Martin says, or or sign them up for some classes at one of the websites like lynda.com, lynda where you can do tons of training about uh, the software side or the photography side in general, or Kelby training. Because I think I, I learned photography very hands-on, very sort of self-taught, trial and error uh, in the film days. And it's like, you know, send you, do a bunch of shots one Sunday afternoon and get your film back a week later. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> what yeah, stop was that? You know, what, yeah. what, this what did that? I do wrong? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now it's so much easier to learn photography in general. Uh, but to take advantage of all these online resources, uh, you can learn a lot quicker. You can just, you know, just get your head around it so much faster. So uh, yeah. I think perfect for the person who's just getting started. And wants to really, uh, you know, get a head start on things. Yeah, uh, and I, I'd echo that because that... Especially in these days, like um, most people have a smartphone, and these both Kelby and Linda have apps that you can look at the, you can watch the training wherever you are on your device. And mm -hmm. I, what I was doing on the plane as I was trapped in LAX, um, or on, not at the on the plane, but in the gate, was looking at tutorials on my iPad. So I'm just sitting there, killing time. Mm -hmm. Got my headphones in there, you know. I'm not. I'm not the angry, disgruntled passenger. I'm just sitting there waiting, <laughs> you know, learning about software, you know. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's what's nice. You can yeah, you can take an opportunity like that when you're just stuck somewhere, and learn something. You know, make yeah. make make useful time. Yep. Um, and then my next one is in the inspiration category. This is something I did as a pick of the week uh, a few episodes ago, but it's uh, a magazine I really like um, that's called Lens Work, and um, mm -hmm. I'll I think I have. Let me grab one in a second. Um, uh, it's a small format uh, print magazine. It's entirely black and white, and it's just gorgeous printing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you open it up every time you get the new one comes. Comes in a nice little cardboard envelope. You open it up, and you you know you, you can just smell the ink on the page. You know, you can just has that that great old, you know traditional printing ink smell. Um, there it is. And um, but I've subscribed to it for years and years, and I would recommend it for almost any photographer, unless the person really, some for some reason, hates black and white. But they cover uh, the full range of, of subject matter. The, this month's issue there has a little bit of architectural subject on it, but it's anything from um, you know reportage and uh, or wildlife or um, travel, really anything you can think of. You know, still life. Um, people, anything you can think of. So every every time it comes, there's always something very interesting to see in there. And they have tremendous, they've really embraced, for a magazine that does beautiful traditional black and white printing, they've really embraced digital online uh, technology as well. So you can uh, buy just a digital subscription, and the digital subscriptions are their extended. So uh, whatever you see in the magazine, you can go online and you can see just a lot more content either from the same photographers that were featured in that month's issue or from other photographers and they also have this great print sale component too. You can buy prints that you see in the magazine. Oh. Uh, and yeah, so it's really a great, great resource and I think it's sort of not as well known as it should be and mm -hmm. I, I just really enjoy it because uh, as much as I love technology, I still love getting the print edition uh, but I'll, I look at it on my iPad and uh, the subscriptions range in price depending on which one you get, but the print subscription I think is traditionally or typically thirty, thirty nine dollars, and like right now for Christmas it's on sale for twenty five dollars for a year. So it's very cool. It's almost like why wouldn't you get it? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that's that's really something people should look at. Okay. And then something I just found today, I was doing a little more research since we had a little extra time. Uh, thanks to Frederick Plain. Uh, <laughs> I was doing a little more looking around today, and I found something in the information category. Uh, and this really appeals to me because uh, in the work I do with architecture and interiors, the weather is super important. Um, it's important to most photographers, but uh, I go nuts with the uh, weather forecasts. I just uh, mostly it's in an anger, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, in terms of whether they're accurate or not. But uh, this was really intriguing. It's a it's a website called um, Skyfire, and it's a it's an app and website. Um, which gives you uh, information on the predicted quality of the sky and conditions for sunrise and sunset, 
which I thought was just amazing. It's like, all right, I'm, I just learned about it today, so I'm going to do a little more of a deep dive into it and see how it works and all. But um, for anyone who cares about the quality of the sky or, or, or great light at the beginning or end of the day, this seems tremendous. That's and, brilliant. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I was watching, speaking of your, your first pick was uh, lynda.com. I was watching a, a thing on Linda um, that David Hobby recorded about travel photography. You know, and how to get the best images when you're, you know, running around the globe like you guys do from time to time. And one of his, one of his main tips was research, 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 and do your homework before you get to the location, mm -hmm. uh, however you can, so that you can, and, you know, and and also get inspiration from other people that have been there and places to go, places not to go, all that stuff. And this seems like the perfect app to help you with that, right? Yeah, I mean, that's I'm all. About, I used a bunch of different apps. Um, yeah, you know, one for sunrise and sunset, just for the information about where the sun's going to be and the angle in the sky. And so, add that to an app like this, it would just be tremendous. And at twenty-five dollars, it's another sort of you know great tool to have, even if you only use if you use it twice a year when you're on vacation. Yeah, uh, just, you know, <laughs> why not? No brainer. Have? Yeah, so uh, I'm definitely hoping that 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 pans out. I mean, I I go to the trouble of like I contact my local weather forecasters and I ask them all kinds of questions about. I don't care if it, you, know, you tell me it's going to be cloudy or not cloudy, but I want to know like. What quality of clouds are we going to have? We're going to have cirrus clouds. We're going to have cumulus clouds. Like, what, what are we going to have? And yeah. uh, so they've given me a few resources, but this one seems like a really good idea too. Love it. And then cool. um, next on my list was uh, into into the creation uh, category, and I've always I, I honestly don't own these, but I've always admired them. I just feel like um, I carry enough camera stuff around. But but for someone who really likes to use their iPhone, uh, Schneider, uh, who's known for tremendous uh, lens quality, they make a lot, you know, view camera lenses and enlarging lenses, and um, they make lenses for DSLRs uh, as well. And also they make all, almost all the lenses for the Phase 1 system these days. They make a great little iPhone system. It's their iPro lens system. And basically it works. It's, a, it's like some of these other ones. It's a case that you would snap your phone into and then uh, the case has like a bayonet mount over the over the iPhone lens, and then you can snap in. Um, I think they make three different lenses, and it's nice the way they actually uh, they sort of screw together and they create their own case, so you can screw them together and just put the whole thing in your pocket as a unit, and, uh, and which which is a nice. And then they, you can take the case and take the lenses out and then screw it into the bottom of the case and use it as a as like a little. Um, uh, support for the phone as well, so you know it gives you the wide angle option, the telephoto option, and then I guess like a, a super wide sort of panoramic option. And so there's a variety of these out there. Schneider is was one of the first ones that that made decent ones, but there's there's a bunch of them out there. But I think for anyone who who just likes their primarily shoots with their iPhone, mm -hmm. or likes to take the iPhone as their vacation camera, or you know just just that sort of lightweight system, this will give a little more variety to that. And and Schneider just uh, most of the lenses I use are made by Schneider on my medium format system, so they make they know what they're doing. They know they know their <laughs> they know their way around glass, right? Yeah, and this is the cheapest thing you're ever going to get from Schneider, uh, two hundred twenty nine dollars. <laughs> I think it's probably less expensive than even their filters. So, <laughs> wow, wow, uh, awesome, very good pick. Yeah, so I'm, you know, adding all this up so far, I think I'm what into at about maybe with all the subscriptions, and everything, me with Martin and his five grand plus those. Yeah, about 10, 15 right now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if we get everything on the list, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to keep things a little more reasonable because I'm always picking things that are ridiculous. So I thought um, just trying to get even some of these, you know, I mean, the, the Schneider one's the most expensive. But the last one on my list was one I had seen in Photo District News Magazine uh, is a, a thing called Lens Flipper. Oh, and I didn't see that in the notes. Where was this, that? This is, um, yeah, I changed it up. <laughs> this is a, a little device that, that has a strap that you can hang on your shoulder, and it basically has whatever, if you're a Nikon or Canon, it basically has that lens mount attached to the strap. So yeah. if, you're, if you're out walking around on a photo walk or, or Martin out shooting snow monkeys or something, you want to change lenses, it's a little bit quicker because this thing hangs from your, from your shoulder with, with your, your spare or extra lens, and it's just quick and easy to, to undo it from this mount and then, and then put it right on your camera. So it's just you don't have to you know if if you're it's probably best if you're just shooting with two lenses, and you want to switch back and forth often. So you, you always just have one lens over your shoulder, and it's protected and held securely. And then it's just easy to switch lenses when you're ready to switch. And, oh, uh, okay. I think you know I, mean? I, I think I understand. Yeah, so it's all confusing to get your head around either it. side. Mm -hmm. There's a mount on either side of this thing, and it hangs from a strap. And you just put your the outgoing lens on one side and unhook the 
the new lens on the other side and put it on your camera and keep going. Yep. Yeah. So it's it, it's a great idea. It's, it's very very simple. It's a, it's available in a variety of different uh, mounts. Uh, it's a little more expensive than I thought it would be. It, it looks like it's about eighty nine bucks at least for the Canon mount. Yeah. Uh, so, but I think it's a that's a great idea, especially if you're just out there with with two lenses, and you don't want to carry or you don't have a second body. Mm -hmm. um, might be great for wedding shooters or you know, who are, might be switching around between a long lens and a wide lens. Yeah. And and your lens is pretty well protected because it's covered. And but it's but it's at the ready, and you don't have to keep fishing around in the camera bag, uh, which you know it can also be a source of dust, the camera yeah. bag itself. So yeah. I think this is a nice solution because you could keep it for the day of shooting. You can keep it relatively clean because sometimes that is I'll take if really I'm cool. I might yeah. want that. Yeah, because <laughs> huh. even when I'm out shooting with my uh, Leica system, and I keep it in a very small bag, uh, but I do notice I, just out of laziness or whatever, I'll, I'll tend to just toss the lens in without the with the rear cap on it. And then you know that's just a huge source of dust. So th this would be a uh, be a nice nice solution for that. Oh, look at that. Oh, well, maybe it's not for me. They make them for Canon, Nikon, Sony Alpha, and Sony E mount lenses. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Well, what you could do? Can you get an adapter? Yeah, I'll put an adapter cover? on my whole. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You... <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I have one. I have one. Yeah, so maybe you could put an adapter on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, those are cool. Those are really cool picks, man. So, are you, have you, Jeffrey? Have you purchased any of this stuff? Uh, I do have lens work, um, and I will be definitely getting in, involved with the Skyfire. Um, okay. But the other ones and the lens flipper is, is interesting. If if they ever come out with a mount for Leica, I might do that. Um, right. Only because that's the camera I'm walking around with more of an interchangeable lens walk around system. Yeah, um, the system I use day to day for my architectural work is. Uh, is you know the camera's on a tripod. That's I'm not worried about being real quick with changing lenses on that system. Yeah, that's the phase one. So the, yeah. the phase one that you could you could buy the phase one or you could buy a decked out Winnebago. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Precise. They'll, they'll just throw that in. <laughs> potato, potato. You know. So. Yeah. Cool, man. Awesome. Very good picks. Very good Thanks. picks. Good. All right, so my picks real quick. Are you, have you guys heard of the the photography store? Um, actually, it's built by my friend Amit Gupta. Um, it's called Photo Jojo. Have you guys heard of it? Heard, heard of, of it, it yeah. Uh, Photo Jojo is like the, geez, I don't know. I don't even know if this company's still around. There was a company on, in New York. I think it was on Long Island. Maybe it was New Jersey. Um, called Edmund Scientific. Oh, yeah. So, do you remember Edmund Scientific? Yeah, I've been there a bunch of times, yeah. Yeah, Edmund Scientific. My dad used to take us there, mm -hmm. and I used to go in there, and my brother and I used to go in there and just gawk around at all these cool little gadgets and, you know, yeah. telescopes and microscopes and little toys, all the scientific type things that you could buy in there. Um, well, Photo Jojo reminds me of that because they're, they're kind of like the Edmund Scientific of the photography world. And they, you go in there, if you guys go to the site, you're going to end up buying something. Because there's all these little things that you wouldn't think of, like, you know, iPhone lens cases, you know, Jeffrey. Um, yep. Juice packs for your for your phone that look like juice boxes. Um, you know, Gorilla Pods, all kinds of weird things, like, you know, a silicon case for your GoPro. And it just goes on and on, all these little tubes. This is a place where you go and you buy those crazy, you know, camera or mugs that look like lenses. They sell those there, right. <laughs> It's a uh, you know it's just it's just like a candy store for photographers and most of the stuff is relatively <laughs> cheap. Coming. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've most of the stuff my... is relatively cheap. If you like look like I'm looking at the the front page right now, and you know what do I say? Here's a well, here's something that's expensive: thirteen hundred dollars for a mega view tripod. But mm. right next to it, the Polaroid cube for twelve dollars. You know, twelve to <laughs> ninety nine. You know, so the little things. So I look on this site. If I'm gonna buy something like if I was if I was going to a Christmas party and buy something for like a you know one of those hidden Santa you know gifts for one of you guys, I would go here and buy one of these things because you can't go wrong. And nine times out of ten, you guys probably would not have anything from this site. And it'll be photography related. So yeah, so definitely check that out. Um, what's my next pick here? Let me stop the screen share. Uh, let's see where are my notes. Next pick is. Oh, the Fuji Instax Mini. So that you you guys have seen that camera, right? It's like the the, mm -hmm. the camera that it's an instant camera that spits out the the print as you take mm -hmm. the photos. So mm -hmm. that guy, I'm gonna bring that up for the folks that are watching the video. I'll bring it up in the screen share here. Martin, you're gonna want this too. I'm telling you. 
<laughs> All right, here it is. So here's the Fuji Instax Mini. This is the Neo Classic. Um, it's 147 bucks. It takes their their Instax film, put the film in there, and it's simple. I mean, it looks like a toy, but it's not. You take photos, and they pop out of the side, and you can give them to people. And they're like they're you know using that instant kind of Polaroid technology, and you can give them out. And Martin, for you, like when you go out on your adventures and you take pictures of people, you know, if you know, other than the snow monkeys, you <laughs> can give them you can give them a print and light yeah. their face up. So. Yeah. That's one of them. The other one is, um, let me find it here. The other one is this guy. Um, and I've, I've talked about this on the show before. It's also from Fuji. It's the SP1 printer. So SP stands for smartphone. Let me bring up the screen share. So it stands for smartphone, and it uses the same film as their, those little Fuji Instax cameras use. The mm. difference is this thing, you turn it on, it creates a little Wi-Fi bubble around itself, and you can print to it from your smartphone. <laughs> and nice. it's, it's the same kind of prints pop out of it, you know? It takes a, you know, it, they just slide out of it, give them to people. It's battery-operated and brilliant, you know? I've got one, and I, this, is, this is the best piece of kit I've purchased in 2014, I think, because yeah. it's... You know, 150 bucks. You put some film in there, and it's just it just brings fun back to photography because you're out, and you, mm -hmm. you know, you throw it in your bag, you take a picture of somebody. Like I was in New York, Jeffrey, I was taking pictures of people yeah. at the restaurant and giving them prints. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh wow, you know, mm. it's such a novelty these days to actually see a print. You know, so. right? Mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you never see prints these days. So, yeah. So that was my other my other pick, and then I had I think a couple more on here. That I need to share. Oh, uh, our friends at Rocky Nook. So uh, Rocky Nook are the folks. If you listen to Valerie's Street Focus podcast, also on the Twip Network, she gives away a book to the winners of the Street Photography Challenge, and those books are provided by our friends at Rocky Nook, which is kind of a. They've been around for a bit, but they've they've recently like switched into fourth or fifth gear in terms of of the quality and the number of photography books that they're publishing. So if you're interested in those, head over to rockingnook.com. They've they set us up with a code with um, I think it's just twip10 and that'll knock 10% off the uh, the purchase price of those books. But go check them out. Pretty good. These are kind of more of those cerebral photography books, you know, that that aren't set your, you know, this is a f-stop, this is a shutter speed. It's more it's more written for uh, an advanced amateur photographer that wants to be inspired and wants to dive a little deeper than just f-stop shutter speeds and you know sensor sizes and that kind of thing. So, kind of a, a really good pick for the advanced photographer in your life. And then the last thing, my last pick here is Ripple Training. So I've been on this tear lately uh, to learn Final Cut Pro. So I came across this, these guys. Actually, uh, my friend Ron Dawson and Chris Finwick recommended these guys to me. And they make these cool, uh, they're, you know, I want to say they're like lynda.com, but, you know, they're much different than lynda.com tutorials. Um, they're just, you know, a different kind of flavor to them. Um, and the cool thing about these guys is if they're, they're, the whole site is focused on Final Cut, uh, da Vinci Resolve and Motion. So if you're if you are interested in learning those pieces of software, you head over to the site and you can purchase and download the training. And it's not a subscription, which is the cool thing. You're not you're not subscribing to it. You just say, oh yeah, I need to learn how to edit sound in Final Cut. You download the thing for forty nine, seventy nine bucks or whatever, and you own it and throw it. And that's one of the things I was listening to in the airport. You throw it on your iPad and you know away you go. So Great, good cool stuff. stuff. So that kind of piggybacks on what you were saying, Jeffrey, on the training thing. You know, training. Yeah, yeah. Give the give the gift of knowledge, right? You can't yeah. go wrong. Yeah, mm. yeah. Martin too had a pick like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Both you guys. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff. All right, I think that's enough. That's a uh, that's a lot of picks. That's like what fourteen picks, fifteen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fourteen. 15 or 16. Yeah. People started. It's, it's fifteen. If you your number two was was the Instax Mini ninety and the SP one printer, so you had five as well there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, mm. but Jeffrey picked Lynda.com or Kelby One. Uh, well, it's, it's just a whole wealth of knowledge and fun and, <laughs> and love. 
<laughs> yeah. Bottom line: keep learning. Never, never stop learning photography. Hmm. Cool. All right, guys. Let's move on to story two real quick. So uh, this is a service that I've used. It's not really a service. It's it's actually a piece of software. It's called BitTorrent Sync. And it, basically, it's an easy way, and they say it's an easy and secure way to back up all the photos and videos on your mobile device um, and, or on your computer. So essentially what this is is a, a, a free piece of software that you install. And are you guys familiar? You're, from, you're familiar, with obviously, with peer-to-peer -peer networking, right? So yeah. like Napster yeah. kicked it all off um, with, their, with the peer-to-peer -peer network, which essentially takes the server out of the mix and you run a piece of software on your computer and your friend runs a piece of software on his computer and you and then maybe 50 million other people run the same software and now <laughs> suddenly you can exchange files back and forth and the magic of of these BitTorrent type technologies are bits of the file the whole file doesn't necessarily need to live on any one computer so you never own the whole thing if you're distributing it around so bits of the file live all over the place, and then the traffic cop software reassembles it, almost like you know the Star Trek Enterprise Energizer, re <laughs> reassembles the file on whoever's computer that asks for the for the file, and so that gives you the the speed plus you know in the world uh, part of the the court thing with Napster and peer to peer networks was no one person actually owned the illegal file, right? <laughs> so. Mm -hmm pieces of the file were all over the place but no one had the the real file so this works in a similar way but it's not with anyone else it's with you I mean you can use it with a friend like Martin you can install it and point it at a folder on your computer I install it point it at a folder on my computer and just like Dropbox whenever we put software or put um, uh, uh, you know bits in that folder they sync mm -hmm. back and forth mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. get it takes Dropbox type, you know, the, the Dropbox type services out of the mix. So it doesn't mm. go to a server and then back down to you. It goes directly to you. So the plus mm. of that is no subscription fees. It's free. It's relatively secure because you're going, you're going peer to peer. But the negative of it, and I've used this. I used it when we were building this, next, this latest release of TWIP. The negative of it is the computer has to be on, obviously, yeah, yeah. for that file transfer to complete. So it, both computers have to be on. So yours has to be on, mine has to be on. Need a catcher and a pitcher in order for the throw to complete. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not, if they're not on, then it doesn't happen. It, when you turn your computer on, the next time you turn it on, it will, you know, ping and say, "Oh, there's a file waiting for me," and pull it down. But it doesn't happen, you know, as it does on Dropbox. So mm -hmm. that's the one, the one negative that I found. But aside from that, you know, it allows you to sync to your local computers obviously but also to anyone else that runs this free piece of software or installs it but they also have an iOS and Android app as well so you can access those files remotely so if you're looking for a way to kinda you know get mm -hmm. out of the whole idea of server based or, or subscription based file archiving and storage you should definitely give these, give these guys a look so bit, bit torrent. Now have you guys have you guys had a chance to look at it and what do you think? Martin mm -hmm. why don't you go first? And I've used BitTorrent for sharing between computers. I actually looked into it as a way to share my uh, Excel files with my accountant. Uh, he want, we wanted to be able to try to work on the same files so that yeah. I don't have to stop stop, stop doing stuff. Um, we, the problem we ran into there is that uh, it's, it's not really uh, that important for this conversation but the problem we ran into is that we couldn't get a client a BitTorrent client for his end computer it was on a Linux NAS or something like that mm. it was doable but um, but yeah I mean I, I've used it I've got the I've got the BitTorrent app on my phone as well okay. I I um, I actually don't use it daily or or in my workflow just because of the reason you said that you you've got to keep it on right. um, I, I found the the other thing that I used that's similar to this is Pogo plug and mm -hmm. that with Pogo Plug, you can do the same thing: access files on your computer from anywhere. Yeah. Um, the difference with Pogo Plug is they actually have got an offline thing. You can uh, subscribe and upload to a server as well, so you get the option of both. Um, I found though that just for me, what I normally do is I leave my iMac on while I'm at home. But if, especially in the summer when it gets really hot in my office. 
I I really have to turn it off when I'm away from home because yeah. I've got no air conditioning running and it's just uh, it gets too hot. So I turn my computer off, and once you do that, your workflow breaks. And so right. Right. for me, I've the fact that you've got to leave the computer on is it kind of messes it up. So yeah. yeah. But I I do think it's great technology. I mean, it's been around for years, and they they they're not going away. They're continuing to to build new software for you know for the modern. Um, you know, someone that needs something like this, and like you say, if I know, I know people that just do not want to have anything in the cloud. They don't trust yeah. the cloud. Yeah. So if that's you, then it's a great way to do that. Yeah. Or, or if you, like me, um, well, I was using it, like I said, when we were in that last development cycle, to move audio masses of audio files back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. And it it worked great. But yeah, you hit that wall every now and then, like, oh, my computer went to sleep and I didn't get that last round of files, or you know, so now you got to turn it on and wait for them to sink down, and you know. So there was that's the one Achilles heel. But like you're saying, if you have a computer, like I have a, a Mac Mini sitting over there that's running generally all the time, you could run it on that and then have the files go over there, but then, you know, I gotta go through the network to get the files off of there onto the machine mm -hmm. <laughs> that I'm working on. So, you know, it's a it's it's an it's an interesting addition to the potential solutions for file sharing, I think. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And I would say I would argue a welcome addition. Jeffrey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this something that you might use? Because you're transferring those giant phase one files around from time to time. Do you have a need yeah. for something like this? Well, I was more interested in it from just the, and in fact, I uh, when I saw the story in the show notes, I downloaded the uh, the iOS app, and mm -hmm. in five minutes, it was I had it set up and it was syncing all my photos from my camera roll to my computer, and I'm like, oh, this is easy. You know, it was quick. It was a couple clicks, and yep. it does, you know, sends you a little email, and you click, and you and you're done. Yeah. Uh, so I really like it for that. I think it's great uh, to have another sort of backup. Uh, separate from whatever, uh, you know, it might back up into iTunes or something. And it's also, for me, it's nice because I, I didn't have a great backup workflow for the iPhone just for, mm -hmm. for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I thought that that was a, a, going to be a really nice, um, really nice, just simple. And it just, you know, it's, it's not comp. It just puts the pictures as JPEGs in a folder. And it's like, Perfect. So that's, that's where they are, and so you can sort through them. Uh, I don't know if it'll sync. Like if I go through and edit that folder on my computer, which is easier to do than doing it on the on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll sync the deletions. That would be interesting to know. You mean back up to your camera roll? I yeah. Like if I delete something yeah, on my I don't computer, think Apple allows it. Yeah, I don't think Apple allows you allows third party apps to delete from the camera roll. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, probably not. But uh, but the, but either way, it's, it's it, was, it was very quick to set up. Yeah, and very easy. But I sort it reminded me for some reason uh, a little bit of the of the uh, Drobo uh, transporter. Yeah, I was gonna say because because that. that's also a cloud avoidance device. Uh, which it, hey, there you go. <laughs> uh, that's also. Uh, a nice way, because uh, the transporter, for those who are familiar, is kind of like your own Dropbox, and it's mm -hmm. rather than using a service like Dropbox, uh, if you don't trust the cloud or you want want to set something up in a, in a more proprietary way, uh, yeah. this is just a little dedicated hard drive that you can point your users to or your customers to. So yeah. it seems similar to me in, in that sense. It's um, so if you're a celebrity and you want to back up all your photos and you don't want to get get hacked, <laughs> uh, so it's it's uh, yeah. it's definitely a nice. Yeah, I'd say nice yeah, you, you you hit a good point. So the Achilles heel, I think, of BitTorrent Sync is that all, you have to be always on for the sync to happen. Um, but Transporter, conversely, from Drobo, mm -hmm. you, you move files over to it from your computer. You can shut your computer off. Oh. And it handles all that syncing back and forth. So your computer, oh, that. that's nice. Yeah, it does not have to be on for yeah. transporter to do its thing. So yeah, I, I generally leave my computers on um, the iMac and the Mac Pro, uh, partly because I, I access them remotely from time mm -hmm. to time. So they just need to be on. And there's some weird thing like the Wacom tablet sort of screws up the sleep on the computer. Yeah. And yeah. my two Drobos uh, hate it when the computer goes to sleep. Those things yeah. just they go into a tailspin, yeah. uh, so uh, I just leave the the systems on all the time. So and also I use daylight um, for my contact management, and that's constantly syncing back and forth between my iPhone and my iPad. And so I just leave them up. <laughs> I just think it's quicker yeah. and easier uh, just to leave everything on anyway. So yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Your Drobos, your Drobos probably have separation anxiety. Yes, I think they do. <laughs> they definitely do. <laughs> They've been traumatized before. They need mom all around all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got. Let's see. Right here. Just yeah. got 
one more fresh um, four terabyte drive to go into the Drobo Pro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. got to pump that up from sixteen terabytes to twenty. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been on that Amazon Prime, right? I've been on that train. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buying drives. Yep. Yeah, I'm sitting right now on a stack of 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 of, of um, two terabyte uh, drives <laughs> <laughs> that have that have come and gone because they're now too small. Oh, you know what I use those for though? You know, get those get those caddies, the cartridges where you can just plug the raw drive into. Oh yeah. 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 And USB uh, three it into your computer. I think mm-hmm. we can use you know you can use them as kind of almost removable storage. You just yeah, plug in, copy idea. files over to them, and take it out, and it's it works like a charm. Mm-hmm. I use them all the time. Mm-hmm. Good idea. That's where all my old drives go. So I have a stack of those old you know rejects from the Drobo drives that I can mm-hmm. still use that way. So. Yeah. You, you know, I, I've I do the same thing. That's the great thing about the Drobo because you just when, once you grow out of the drives, you just buy a bigger one and pull it out and replace it, rebuilds all of your data. But yeah. what I what I do is with those old two two terabyte drives, things like that, whenever I go back to England, I throw everything that I own at the moment, all of my files at the moment, go onto those. And I don't mind that they're split up into different drives. And I just throw them into the the loft space in my brother's house. So that's my <laughs> that's mm-hmm. my hard copy. Uh, that's my non cloud hard copy. Yeah, you're awesome. Uh, that's good. I haven't, I haven't done it for a few years, but it's that whenever I go back to England, that's what I like to try to do. And it just just a little bit of extra, extra. That's cool. Yeah, offsite storage. Offsite mm-hmm. storage. Cool guys. Oh wow, we're we're getting close to the end here. Let's uh, we're going to skip this next story and thank our second sponsor for this episode of This Week in Photo, and that's our friends over at Squarespace.com. All right, gents, let's dive in for some listener Q and A. This is where we answer a question that a listener, a TWIP listener, has submitted. And recently we implemented a feature on thisweekinphoto.com. You can find the link at the top of the This Week in Photo website, the Submit a Question link, where you can go and record an audio question for us. This week's two audio questions are from Mr. Bob Brewer and Mr. Michael Williams. Here you go. Okay, guys, so in case you hadn't heard that, the uh, the gist of their questions are the same thing, essentially. They want to know about adapters. They're interested in the Sony a7 series, uh, and before they invest in those lenses, they want to use legacy lenses from other manufacturers on those cameras. So my suggestion, as I put in the show notes here, is the Metabones adapter, which will transmit the TTL or through the lens information as well as control autofocus and all that. What do you guys think? Jeffrey, you have any thoughts for these guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly ways to, to physically make that connection between the camera uh, and the older lenses. Um, depending on the, the, the one listener was, was wanting to use some old Minolta lenses. Mm-hmm. And nothing... Uh, Against Minolta, but uh, any lens that was designed initially in the in the film years, which I'm assuming he means, uh, uh, may just suffer from just not being great lenses for digital. So mm-hmm. I would think that um, if you already have the lenses, there's no harm in getting the adapter. That's not terribly expensive, and giving it a try and see. You know, maybe you have a favorite lens, favorite focal length. Uh, maybe you like the size or weight of a, of a particular lens, but uh, I would definitely test it out and see see if that lens uh, works well with the sensor. If you haven't purchased the camera yet, it might be worth. Uh, I don't know if you can rent the adapter, but you can certainly rent the the body from like a borrow lenses or something, mm-hmm. uh, like the Sony camera. Uh, do they rent the adapters? I'm not sure. They may. I don't know. I'm gonna look right now. Yeah. yeah. So, but it might be worth doing, like only because the lenses are gonna work differently. Like I was considering buying uh, the Sony camera and using my uh, Leica lenses on it. Um, and I read some reviews, and it just happened to be that the Leica lenses didn't work as well as they did on Leica bodies. Yeah. So, uh, Which you can imagine. It's just they're not quite designed for the Sony sensor. So I would think that you would get certainly a perfectly usable image. Uh, it just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the best quality image, uh, it may not be that you're going to get it from third-party or legacy lenses, particularly if they were designed... Uh, you know, 15 or 20 years ago for a film, yeah. and so that might be an advantage of 
the uh, the Sony lenses in particular. And I, I brought this up many times in the past on this show. Hope it doesn't sound too repetitive, but one advantage of using Sony's lenses, uh, and I'm not talking specifically mathematically uh, of anything in particular, but uh, in general, a mirrorless camera is going to have better lenses because you don't have to design the lenses around that mirror box. Mm-hmm. So if you're adapting a lens that's made for a DSLR, um, and the R meaning reflex, and that's what that mirror box is all about. Um, the lenses, particularly the wider ones, are going to suffer from a little bit more distortion because the lens has to be pushed a little bit further away from the sensor than it ought to be. Uh, and a mirrorless design can be closer. That's why all these adapters fit in the first place. It's yeah. because the, there's, um, they're making up, uh, most of the lenses are closer to the sensor and the mirrorless, and the SL- DSLR lenses were designed to be a little bit further away, so there's room for that adapter. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, makes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Burl Lens's site right now, and I see they do have Metabones. They've got a Metabones okay, Canon great. EF to NEX speed booster. Mm-hmm. They've got the EF to NEX Smart Adapter 2, the EF to EF lens to Sony NEX Smart Adapter 3, Nikon G to Micro Four Thirds speed booster, and Nikon G lens to Fuji X camera speed booster. So, hmm. yeah. Was this guy out of luck then? Was there a Minolta? No. Right? Yeah, I didn't right. see Minolta. Yeah, <laughs> okay. so he's out of luck for that regard. I spent a few a few minutes yesterday trying to find the a Minolta adapter on Met, on the Metabone site, and I couldn't find one. So I don't know if they even exist. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the maybe some of the because Minolta were basically bought by Sony, right? So yeah, they were. maybe yeah. maybe some of the Sony uh, or the Sony adapter might work, um, but I couldn't find I couldn't get confirmation of that from the site. So that's the first thing to really check yeah. if, if an adapter even exists. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah the tip audience will, will chime in, I'm sure, because it may be that that Sony Alpha mount is essentially a Minolta mount. I'm not sure, but I Could feel like I've be. heard that it was, but I'm not sure. Mm. We have to double check that. Mm. But you'd probably still need an adapter because, um, cause again, the, the Minolta lens is having been designed for that mirror box. Right. It's basically mm. a spacer. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost precision like optics. Yeah. yeah, you like an extension tube. Yep. Martin, do you have anything to add to that to that question? Um. Not really. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey covered it wonderfully, and I, yes. uh, I really just don't use these systems yet. I'm still using my chunky bricks as we. As we <laughs> I know. We're, see, you see that subtle as the subtle from the side peer pressure on you, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it, I've got nothing against mirrorless at, at all, yeah. and I've mentioned it before. I'll be there at some point. It's just that that time is not quite there for me. Yeah. Well, you need you need serious weatherproofing too, and then and yeah, well, that, and cold that's temperatures. The part of it. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, listeners, if you have a question you'd like us to tackle on the show, just visit our website at thisweekinphoto.com and click on that Submit a Question link to send us a question or leave us a voice message, and you might get your voice and URL heard on This Week in Photo. Look at that, free advertising on TWIP. Hmm. Can it get any better than that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I feel like we already did picks because we did the Christmas thing, but let's blow through these picks of the week too, um, because this is the picks of the week segment. So Martin, <laughs> why don't you tell us yours? What's your pick of the week? You know, what? I'm I'm gonna go for the uh, Optech USA. I'm gonna hold it up for the for the people that are watching, but the Optech USA Pro Loop Strap. Um, this is. Uh, they're, they're like twenty dollars, but basically what these do, uh, they're twenty dollars. But be, being in Japan, I get to pay thirty-five dollars because a number of shops add their cut as they bring it into the country. But yeah. um, the basically what they are, and again, I'll hold it up just for the video watchers. It's it's a camera strap, but it comes with these uh, the the quick release clips, uh-huh. and then you you put your camera strap into that, you know, and you can actually use. I have various camera straps that, because I buy these, I buy different ones for different things, and you can get wider ones, shorter oh, yeah. ones. Yeah. But the the reason I like this, and this is a tip that I I picked up years ago, having dropped a camera in a in a Zodiac full of water in Antarctica. Mm. Um, the great thing about these is if you use something like the Black Rapid on long lenses, generally the Black Rapid goes on the lens and not the body. Mm-hmm. So if you if you if the body comes away from the lens it's basically going to fall to the floor. But what I do is, I because when I take the camera strap off, I can actually loop this through the Black Rapid strap itself. It's, it's, a, it's a, a fail-safe. It's basically, nice. if the body comes away from the camera, 
then it's still going to be held by the the black rapid strap so that's why I use these love them I've got um, I've got these pro loops uh, on every camera that I own and that yep. means that I can do that uh, really easily and it all just works really well I love systems that just work yeah. and the yeah so the Optech USA uh, camera strap system is one of those I love it um, awesome. so that's my pick definitely Great. perfect that's good we'll, we'll definitely link over to that Jeffrey Totaro what is your pick yeah. um, I when I was at the photo expo in New York um, I ran across this company that's called blazing editions and uh, I don't know if you saw them there Frederick but I'm gonna yeah. hold these things up I got some samples from them of some images of mine these are, are prints that are printed um, on aluminum so <laughs> Hear that? I thought uh, you said it was alumin aluminium. <laughs> aluminium. <laughs> John, I think I think these are designed by Johnny Ive. I think. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> but what's what's cool? They come in. This is the uh, the white gloss finish, which is basically just like a glossy finish for any any print. So if you if you didn't know it was aluminum, you may not know that. But they they um, they come in a variety of of, of different finishes, and, and one of them is I think they call it clear. And wherever the highlights are, it actually just shows the aluminum through. Uh, mm. So it can add, depending on the photo, it can add a really interesting texture. But what's also nice is that they're, for those watching the video, yeah, it's extremely thin, uh, mm. just a little sheet of, of aluminum. And so you can, uh, just sort of opens up some different possibilities for mounting. So you can do a nice stand away uh, from the wall. You know, they sell different variety of ways to, to mount them. Yeah. And uh, they're just great for certain subjects. So I sent this, this is a print of... Um, uh, image I did of the Trump Tower in Chicago, and mm -hmm. uh, just kind of a dramatic black and white image. And oh, so that's I wanted, beautiful. To, wanted to try that out on this because I was thinking maybe doing a large one. And um, they're very, very lovely people to work with. And uh, this was one I tried from the Leica camera. I, I do these fun details of cars at an annual car show. Yeah. Uh, so this is very shallow depth of field, and that that came out really nicely. Uh, so they're they're it's just another alternative for printing. And one thing I was thinking of is, and that they actually do for themselves, is like a small promo piece. Like if you, it certainly wouldn't be the cheapest way to do it, but because uh, you can you can do like rounded corners and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you wanted to have just a handful of really slick promo pieces, uh, and you can print on both sides, uh, so it could oh. just be a, like a really fancy uh, leaf behind for a meeting or something. Uh, I imagine you could even string a few of them together if you wanted to just do a couple, a little bit of hand binding, drill a couple holes in them or something. Mm -hmm. Could be something. Uh, Really interesting. So, yeah, their their website is blazing.com, and uh, and I work with a woman there named Mary, and uh, she was she was very helpful. So uh, yeah, just just really cool. I, just something I saw. Uh, my friend Lance from uh, Digital Transitions uh, was right next to their booth, uh, and he showed me um, he showed these guys uh, to me. So just something fun to think about for printing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool, and that would that could have gone on your Christmas list too, because sure. you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you can know. get um, they do a nice thing for forty five dollars. Uh, that's what th this was was uh, you can get their four finishes, so mm -hmm. you send them one file and they'll send you four eight by tens and their four finishes. Oh, beautiful! I'm gonna for do that for forty five bucks. Yeah, so if you're interested in it, or even if you just want <laughs> some eight by tens of a particular image, um, yeah. uh, for forty five bucks you get four, so you can see all the different. Uh, Hey, you, so. you know, Jeffrey, they, they look really nice and neutral as well. I've I had a an a aluminium um, <laughs> print <laughs> one month, and uh, and it it came back with a nasty blue tint. Um, oh, okay. I, I was really not impressed. So I've I, I like the look of that. They look very neutral. Yeah, they're 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 pretty good. Well, they, they they I was speaking with them. They could they could tweak the color a little bit more. Like they're not dead neutral, but they're definitely pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I was speaking with them about just a little more uh, fussy profiling and stuff, but they they can mm -hmm. handle that. Yeah, but they're de they're definitely good. It's some sort of um, process where they make the print on a certain whatever material, and then that print is laid on top of the aluminum, mm -hmm. and then through a heat process, then that Sweet. transfers the image right into the metal. So yeah, it's not really so. sitting on the metal; it's meant to be sort of in the metal. It's nice. <laughs> part of the metal. Nice. Yeah, Martin. Martin, do you want to share who that was that made that bluish print, or do you want to? Um, them? I, I, I would, but they actually, um, they, they're not doing the prints anymore. They stopped. Okay. They, it was, they were planning to do that, um, but they, they were planning to do a service, uh, a fulfillment service, but they've actually stopped it. Um, and part of the reason is probably because they couldn't get some of the bits right. Um, but they, everything else, <clears throat> everything else that they did was really good. So. I'm not going to drag drag them through the through the mill because of that. Of course not. Um, of course not. Yeah, they they did some good stuff. Okay. 
All right. Well, cool. Perfect. That's a good pick. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna try that, Jeffrey. Those look. I'm looking at the site now. It looks. Yeah. Really cool. I wonder if they can do square because I want to get some oh, yeah. square things printed. Oh, they'll do whatever. Yeah. They can also do like random cutouts. Like if you had some, you know, one wanted to make a crazy shape of something. Uh, how, how about Shuriken, the shoot, the throwing stars? Let's get some. <laughs> yes. Let's get some print throwing stars made. Yeah, you can put your own picture on there and throw it. Yeah. Murder by print. <laughs> Thanks to Mark Bailey. Thank you. <laughs> No, you know, cool what I'm, I'm working with um, with my good friends down at Bay Photo here mm-hmm. in the Bay Area to uh, get some. We're going to do an installation here. You'll probably see it on Twip next year, but on one of the walls in my office, we're going to do a grid of all the Twip show logos and mm-hmm. kind of have it in the background. But we're going to do it on metal, you know. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so it should be interesting. And you know, ultimately, I would like all the hosts to have you know. Uh, their logo on a big metal thing in their office somewhere. So, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Cool. All right. Um, my pick. What is my pick? I had a pick. Oh, here it is. Yeah, I, I had had in the notes to the side. Um, so I was on a podcast. I was a guest or an interviewee on a podcast by my friend Chris Finwick, and he runs a podcast called Final Cut Pro X. Or I'm sorry, it, he needs to change the name of the show. FCPX <laughs> Grill is the name of the uh, of the podcast, and it's all about Final Cut Pro. It's just a conversational show from people who like to edit video and manage media and make animations and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just search for FCPX Grill and you'll find it. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I was episode number one hundred one. And Joseph Lenaski, who's also a frequent guest on This Week in Photo, was episode number 102. So go give those two a listen. And, uh, right. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, the episode I did with Chris, with Chris was basically centered around, like I told you guys, I'm just now kind of trying to get my brain around this video thing. Not that I want to become a videographer or anything, but I want to understand how the tool works and, and the power that I have. So, you know, we had a conversation about it and recorded it. So I think it, it's helpful for people that are in the same shoes as I am. So, yeah. So Good give stuff. that a listen. All right, folks, we are at the end of another episode of This Week in Photo. Many thanks to our sponsors for this for their help in making sure the show gets and stays on the air. Guys, Martin Bailey, where can people go to keep up with you? Go to martinbaileyphotography.com. Uh, there's links to everything there, and uh, if, if anyone's interested in any of my tours, there's a link at the top as well, and it's all just there. Good, good uh, top page link to everything. martinbaileyphotography.com. Easy. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot, Martin. Always, like I said at the top, always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And Mr. Jeffrey Totaro, where can people go to see some of that wonderful Phase 1 architectural photography that you do? <laughs> Thanks, Freddie. Uh, the easiest place to find me is at my website, jeffreytotaro.com. Uh, I'm also on Twitter at Jeffrey Totaro. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much where I live between those two. Um, and uh, so come, come check it out and uh, keep in touch. Awesome. Cool. And listeners, be sure to check out our website at thisweekinphoto.com. And with that, it's time to take that lens cap off.